Many Archons ask the question, is it worth it to buy Keyforge Age of Ascension? After the success of Keyforge Call of the Archons, Fantasy Flight Games wanted to make more of Keyforge without messing too much with the formula of what worked. So with the new expansion, there's a mix of old favorites and new cards in each deck, with over 200 new cards spread across the same seven houses from the base set. Keyforge Age of Ascension might just be the sign that this game has many sets to come or evidence that Keyforge was ultimately just a one-hit wonder. Let's take a look. If you haven't already seen my video, Is It Worth It to Buy Keyforge? Call of the Archons, you can do so here. And if you'd like to learn how to play Keyforge in less than 15 minutes, you can do so here. Let's begin by looking at Old versus New. Rather than creating functional reprints or trying to create an entire game from scratch within the Keyforge rule set, Fantasy Flight chose to have the set be roughly half old cards. The upside here is naturally that means that Keyforge is going to feel a lot like the game that many of us fell in love with, including some chase cards making their way into Age of Ascension decks. There is naturally going to be a counterpoint to this, the largest of which is that whenever a new set comes out, reprints usually feel like old news. With a game like Keyforge, it's a little more complicated. Because there isn't any deck building in the game, this is likely the best way for for the game to create a new experience without entirely abandoning the groundwork that had been laid for the game with old cards. Benefits of new cards. Whenever a company is given a chance to iterate on their first design process, they are obviously going to take that opportunity to try and fix some of the problems that didn't get caught in the beta test run. Keyforge is no exception. The most notable change in design of creatures in Age of Ascension is that there are several cards that punish people for simply resting on their laurels and reaping. Some great examples of this are Blood Shard Imp, which reads, after a creature reaps, its controller must sacrifice it. Zzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzz
a way that games tend to make cards more powerful is to take a card and simply add new abilities. Couple this with the different static effects in the vein of the Reap Punishers from the earlier part of this video, and it can be more difficult to parse complicated boards. Cards like Grump Buggy, for example, are things that add extra layers to the existing rules of Keyforge that fluctuate constantly as the games go on. The more things are on the table, the more you're going to have to keep up with it. The trade-off here is that many of these cards are designed with the goal of making players want to trade resources more frequently. Grump Buggy is something that does less if there isn't that much on the table, so if you want to do less, you should try and trade creatures away by fighting with them. Factoring this in is good for helping combat the inevitable complexity creep that's going to be accompanying any game releasing a new expansion, but there are times that involve so much going on that it's difficult to keep track of everything. What about pricing? At the same MSRP as the original Keyforge decks, it's fairly cheap to get a game that you can play with right out of the box, that ultimately feels like something that is exactly yours due to the way the decks are generated. So when looking at this new key Ford set, the key parts are as follows. Age of the Ascension decks are going to be roughly 50% new cards. The decks still play out in ways that feel like the base set, with new cards augmenting play. Many of the new cards are designed with fixing problems with the first set's gameplay. The decks are more powerful. As I said, this is because game companies are going to make cards that are as powerful or more powerful than older ones because they want the set to sell. We still have the same MSRP, and overall, the games are more complicated than they were before. There's a lot more going on with these cards than with the introductory set. It's great if you already like Keyforge, but it is worse for teaching someone how to play Keyforge than Call of the Archons. Final conclusion? Ultimately, for someone who is into Keyforge, Age of Ascension is wonderful. It reduces the number of non-games that came from some balance issues in Call of the Archons, while also promoting more interactive gameplay on both sides of the table. It's worse for introducing somebody to the game, but is far better once you've learned how to play and want to play the best Keyforge that you can. Grade? Age of Ascension is an A-, minus, with the biggest thing holding it back being a difficulty for new players to face with the growing complexity. And I'll add that even an experienced player may experience difficulty when trying to keep track of everything that's going on the board with this more complex game state. I hope this video has been of some help to you already know how to play Keyforge and want to get better, check out my guide for quick tips for improving your Keyforge gameplay. And this program was made possible thanks to a sponsorship from Card Kingdom, as well as the Patreon support of viewers such as you. So thank you. Who's going first draws seven cards, and the other player draws six. Each player is allowed one mulligan after they draw their cards, meaning they can reshuffle their hand into their deck and draw a new hand with one less card if they want. Gameplay. On a turn, a player does the following in this order. One, forge a key. Two, choose a house. Three, play, discard, and use cards of the chosen house. Four, ready cards. Five, draw cards. Forging a key. The first thing that happens on a turn is forging a key if possible. If you have six amber at the start of your turn, you 
next turn. In Keyforge, this means that the only card advantage that really exists is board presence. That being said, the primary reason to play creatures is to generate amber. Some houses are better at attacking and have payoffs for doing so, like Brobnar and Shadow, but others are more focused on what happens when you reap with them, like Mars and Logos. If the opponent has cards that can prove